Good evening, everyone. Welcome, and hope you're having a great time at Google I.O. so far. I'm Avnish Mirathuri, and I'm a product manager at Google, working on Google Pay for online payments. And I'm Tony Chen, software engineer, also working on Google Pay. And we're here today to talk to you about what we've been working on on Google Pay to improve online checkout. So I'm sure a lot of you here are already excited about the potential for e-commerce, and rightly so. In the US alone in 2017, we saw retail sales near half a trillion dollars with the highest year-on-year -year growth in the last six years. And we're seeing similar growth trends globally. But this growth is happening despite the fact that online conversions haven't really improved. From all the estimates we've seen, conversions across desktop and mobile devices has been largely flat over the last couple of years. And it's not hard to see that card abandonment during checkout is one of the leading causes. When users go to checkout online, they see long checkout forms, 15-plus form fields to enter their card information, their billing address, their shipping address, logins, passwords, and the list goes on. When users see all these forms, it's not surprising that they drop off, especially when they're in a low-speed data connection on mobile devices. So we think there's a huge opportunity here to really improve online checkout. And that's what we hope to do with Google Pay. The start of this year, we unified our payment and checkout experiences across all of Google under a single brand, Google Pay. Our vision for Google Pay is to enable users everywhere to pay with their Google account anywhere they're signed in. So Google Pay is more than just an app on a device or a button on a website. We're building it as a platform integrated as a core part of a user's Google account and available to them everywhere they're signed into Google. In this session, we'll spend some time to share some of the changes we've made over the last year as we've launched Google Pay. And then we'll talk about how you can implement the Google Pay API. And finally, we'll also share some of the product enhancements that are coming up. So looking back a few years ago, we launched Android Pay, and we started our journey with enabling easy in-app payments using cards that users had provisioned on their device in the Android Pay app. We launched this feature in 12 countries and saw great adoption from thousands of developers. But we heard from you, our developers, that you wanted more. You wanted access to many more users, paying with more payment methods, and in several more countries. And so we went back to the strengths of Google, our billions of users across multiple popular products around the world. Our users have saved hundreds of millions of cards to their Google accounts, making purchases on apps like the Play Store, YouTube, or even just shopping the web using Chrome. With Google Pay, users can easily make payments with their payment methods stored in their Google account anywhere they're signed in a consistent and seamless payment experience. And Google Pay is already the way users pay across Google. Users see Google Pay today when they check out um, um, on the Play Store buying an app, renting a movie, or just on Chrome autofilling a, uh, a checkout form. And not only is Google Pay present when users bu uh, buy from Google, but it's also being incorporated into several new services for transactions that users can make with third-party merchants. For instance, you'll see Google Pay powering checkout for merchant experiences with an Android messages for merchants that have used rich business messaging. And also assistant enable transactions at the Google Assistant or on web actions, including AMP pages. And in keeping with our vision, we've extended our Google Pay APIs to external developers so users can pay with all of their cards in their Google account when they're on your sites or apps without any additional setup or having to download a new app. We launched earlier this year with payments enabled on Android devices, both native apps and on the mobile web using Chrome's implementation of the payment request standard. In the last few months, we've already seen great adoption from several developers around the world. Take a look. Users can already use Google Pay on a range of merchants, from order-ahead apps to, sites, uh, on, to retail sites 
travel, transportation, ride sharing, and many more. We have merchants live across the world from the US, Brazil, Russia, the UK, Australia, Japan, and many more. And merchants with a global user base can enable Google Pay for all their users with a single API integration. For instance, Deliveroo, a leading order ahead app, launched Google Pay for their users in over 12 markets. And Uber is rolling out Google Pay for all of their users globally. And our early developers have seen great results uh, from their integrations. For example, Hotel Tonight saw that Google Pay users converted at a 65% higher rate than users on their regular checkout flow, thanks to the easy payment experience. And as I mentioned earlier, our new Google Pay APIs enable many more users to pay with all of their cards in the Google account. And so when StubHub updated from Android Pay, they saw a 7x increase in the number of unique users paying with Google Pay. And when Airbnb updated, they saw 11x increase in daily transactions from Google Pay. And our APIs also enable merchants to build streamlined onboarding experiences for their users. For example, new Airbnb users, when they set up the, uh, the app, can completely skip the payment method flow, payment method setup flow, and complete a booking with Google Pay without ever having to enter any payment information or billing addresses. We're now taking a huge step to make Google Pay available to many more users and to developers on the web. Last week, we announced that Google Pay is now available across the web, from Android to desktop, and yes, even on iOS devices. Through one integration with our JavaScript libraries, merchants can enable Google Pay, Google Pay globally, available to all of your users, regardless of what device or browser they're shopping on. We've also focused on making our APIs really easy to integrate. I've been really encouraged by the positive feedback we've seen from developers. For instance, the Iconic, an online fashion retailer in Australia, reported that it took just one of their developers a week to enable and launch Google Pay. And in keeping with our mission to make integrations as simple as possible, we've also partnered with leading e-commerce platforms to make accepting Google Pay on the web even simpler. For instance, if you're a Shopify merchant, all you have to do is go to your uh, merchant settings page in the payment provider section, and with a single click, you can enable Google Pay. And Shopify launched just a few weeks ago, and in that time, we've already seen tens of thousands of merchants enable Google Pay. And finally, we partnered with several leading payment providers, gateways, and processors around the world to, to enhance security and make it easy for their merchants to add Google Pay. These providers have already enabled Google Pay in their SDKs and merchant solutions, and we have many more coming soon. To show you now how Google Pay works on the web and how you can integrate the Google Pay APIs, I'm going to hand it over to Tony. All right. Thank you, Avnish. Can you switch to my iPhone, please? So I can't really walk very far with this. So I'm going to quickly walk you through what the web experience is going to be like. I'm on a merchant site right now. I'm going to buy something and check out with Google Pay. Now, as you all know, Mother's Day is coming on up, and I haven't bought anything for my mom yet. As a father of two, I normally would try to buy something for my wife first. But every time I try to pick out clothes for her, somehow they always end up getting returned. So I think my mom will appreciate this nice green sweater, so I'm going to go ahead and add it to the cart. I'm going to click Checkout, and up pops a Buy with Google Pay button. I'm going to open this, and this shows our payments sheet. Our payments sheet is what uh, shows the available cards and shipping addresses associated with a particular Google account. If you happen to be logged in into more than one account, you can easily toggle it like so. And as you can see, this is a test account, so there aren't any cards set up. I'm going to go ahead and switch it back so I can easily check out. Now, I'm going to ship this to my mom, so I need to add her shipping address. And sometimes I really have a tough time remembering exactly what my mom's shipping address is. But it's a good thing that Google Pay shows autofill suggestions from the Google Maps API to make even filling out this form super simple. 
Now that I'm done, I'm just going to go ahead and click the Continue button. And now we've just made a purchase. Oh, the same. So Google Pay also remembers the last selected card and shipping address to make your next checkout easier. For example, if I open up uh, the Google the payment sheet again, you'll now see that my mom's shipping address is now the default. Users will see the same consistent user experience across all major browser platforms, such as Safari, Firefox, and coming soon, Microsoft Edge. One other thing to note is that this merchant page, even though we built this just for I.O., we're going to actually release this to the public and to all of you developers so that you can play around with our APIs without first having to integrate. We built this nifty little developer console on the top right. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a little bug little icon. And you can easily manipulate the request. So for example, if I wanted to not collect shipping address for whatever reason, I can change this to false. And if I, for some reason, can't support all the available card networks, I'll easily remove one like so. And then I'm going to click on the Google Pay button. And now you'll see that the shipping address is no longer available. And my previously selected Visa card is no longer accepted. Can you switch back to the slides, please? So for that uh, site that you just saw, go to g.co pay slash demo. Now, now that we've walked through what the web experience is like, let me walk you through how easy it is to integrate with the Google Pay API. With these four simple steps, you can enable the same payment experience that I just showed you for all Google users. The four steps are as follows. You're going to download some JavaScript, check if the user is on a supported browser, add the Google Pay button, and then open up our payments sheet. So first things first, you're going to add the script tag to your site. As soon as the script is loaded, you're going to construct this payments client object by passing in an environment field. We support two environment fields, test and production. In environment test, you don't have to register with us. You can actually play around with the APIs yourself and integrate into your site. In environment test, we do show the users real data. However, whenever they make a selection, we actually return you a fake token. If you're, working with, uh, if you're integrating with one of our supported processors, we'll actually return you a token that you can actually charge on, in their test environment. Once you complete the integration and you're ready to handle real payment, come register with us through our self-service portal, and then flip the environment to production. So now, now that you have the payments client constructed, the first API you're going to call is, is ready to pay. Is ready to pay returns a simple Boolean telling you whether the user is on a supported browser or not. At Google, we really focus on optimizing for conversion. So rather than you showing yet another payment option, you should only show Google Pay if you think it will help improve your checkout experience. So if is ready to pay returns false, don't render the Google Pay button. In the near future, we're going to make an enhancement to the is ready to pay API. So you can ask for ready-to-pay Google users with an existing payment method. Now that you know that the user is ready for uh, making a payment, you're going to call our second API, Create Button. Create Button returns a simple HTML element that you can append to the DOM of your site. We highly recommend that you should call this API over constructing your own button with static assets so you can take advantage of all of the improvements that we make to the button over time. For example, in the near future, we're going to automatically translate, to the, translate the button to the user's locale in order to improve click-through rates. Another thing that we recommend is that you should use our default color, which is black. However, if you happen to have a, a site with a dark theme, we provide an alternate white color that you can use. The minimum that you need to pass to this Create Button API is this on-click event listener function. So once you add the button to your site, you, the user clicks on the button. You're going to have to call. You're going to call our load payment data to actually open up the payment sheet. The first thing you're going to do is construct this payment data request object, which is just a set of payments configuration used for this particular transaction. 
For example, if you need to collect a full billing address because you want to do an AVS check, or to collect a phone number so that you can contact the user, you can easily configure it like so. We highly recommend that you collect as little information as necessary from the user, as we've seen conversion rates tend to drop whenever you ask the user for additional information. One other thing to call out in this request object is this payment method tokenization parameters. This object may have a long name, but all it is is a set of key value pairs that we're going to forward to your processor. So be sure to check your processor's integration guidelines to, make,、uh, to find out what they need from us. Now that you've constructed the, the request object, you're going to pass it to load payment data. That's going to open up a, our payment sheet. The user is going to make a selection, and we're going to return to you a payment data object. The payment data object consists, consists of metadata about the user's selection so that you can use it to render the order confirmation screen. Also within the payment data object is this payment method token. The payment method token is what you're going to actually use to complete the transaction by passing it to the processor. One thing to note is that security is already baked into our product. Our payments sheet is always opened within a separate pop up window to eliminate、uh, user click jacking or any other security vulnerabilities. What that means is if the if site happens to be compromised, no malicious content can be overlaid onto our payments sheet so it won't confuse the user by obscuring their data. And what that means is a Google user's data is always kept in their control. So, what that means for you as a developer is that when the click event happens, you must call load payment data synchronously. Don't make network requests to the server or any other asynchronous calls in order to avoid having the pop up window blocked by the user's browser. And that's our entire integration. So, it's super simple. I'm going to prove to you how simple it is by doing a live implementation from scratch. And all I'm going to do is basically copy and paste from the deck that I've already presented to you to show the entire integration. Can we switch to our, my Pixel book, please? So remember, folks, this is a live implementation. There is a possibility that things may not work. Just in case, I have this cheat sheet that may help me out. But hopefully, I won't need it. All right, so I'm going to do this、uh, implementation on JS Fiddle, which allows me to enter JavaScript on the fly, and then it'll print out onto this result page on the bottom right here. So on the left, we have HTML, JavaScript's in the middle, and CSS on the right. As you can see, we've already downloaded the script tag for pay.js, and we've already constructed the payments client with environment test. So I'm just going to expand the JavaScript section a little bit, just so that you have more room to see. And the first thing we're going to do is call is ready to pay. So, is ready to pay returns a simple Boolean that tells you whether the user is on a supported browser or not. So, I'm going to print out the response of is ready to pay. Response.result. I'm going to update the、uh, site. It's taking a little time to think about it. And try it again. Wow. This is art. <laughs> Let me try that. What's up? Ah, thank you. I changed this based on、uh, someone else's suggestion. <laughs> and now that totally screwed me up. Thank you for catching that. All right, let's、uh, print that out again. All right, run it again. Great. The result shows you that we're on a supported browser. The next thing we're going to do is call create button. So, create button returns a simple HTML element that we're going to use to embed into our site. So, I'm going to add the append the button into the site and then. Need to fill in this click event listener function, which I'll leave blank for now. Updates again. And here you go. Here's our black Google Pay button. 
Now, by default, as I mentioned, we always use the black color. However, if your site happens to have a dark theme, you can, auto you can easily change the button color to white, like so. And then you'll automatically get this white button. If you're happening to developing on a responsive page, or, on a, or if you just don't have real estate and you need a narrower button, you can easily change the button type to short to get a shorter button. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't need to fill in any of this at all. By default, we will always use the black button in the standard size. So now we're going to call payment data. By, we're going to call load payment data by constructing this payment data request. So I'm going to copy the request object from the, these two slides. And then I'm going to merge them together. And then we're going to fill in the, we're going to call load payment data on the button click event, which I left empty. And then to show that everything is wired together properly, I'm going to fill in this process payment function. So the process payment function is going to take in our payment method token. And the token itself is a JSON object. So I'm going to call uh, json.stringify so that you can see the content. All right, here we go. Button click. I'm going to wait a little bit. Click on the button. Up oh, pops the payment sheet. You make a selection. This always seems to happen. All right. Update again. It's going to work the second time. Here we go. And here is the exact token onto the result pane. Thank you. Can we switch back to the slides, please? Thank you. So like I said, super simple. You can complete the entire implementation within a matter of minutes. Oop, wrong button. So I've just shared with you what we've been working on the past few months leading up, to into, leading up until this launch. Now I'm going to share with you a couple of things that we're going to be launching soon to enhance our offering for both users and for you, the developer. Let's start with the user experience first. As I mentioned before, we want to have the same consistent payment experience for all major browser platforms. However, we're going to try and optimize wherever we can. So for the browsers that support native UI, such as Chrome with payment request, we can offer this nice native payment sheet experience on mobile websites. Similar to a pop-up window, this native sheet is impossible to clickjack because the sheet itself is completely separated and detached from the Chrome app itself. But unlike a pop-up window, this payment sheet is a streamlined purchase experience because it allows the user to stay in context of the payment within your site. Soon, we're going to be expanding native support from, from mobile onto the desktop with the payment handler spec. So Payment Handler works by installing service workers into the user's browser. A service worker is just a JavaScript interface between our payments sheet and the native UI in the browser. When you, you don't really have to understand what a service worker is, nor do you really have to understand what Payment Handler does. Because when you integrate with the Google Pay API, all of this will happen automatically. We're going to do all the heavy lifting for you. So let me walk you through a, a, a quick preview of what that's going to look like on uh, Chrome desktop. Can you switch me to my Pixel book, please? So as you can see, we're on our merchant page again. This time, when I click on the Google Pay button, up pops our payment sheet within, within this nice, secure, native frame. Very similar to the mobile experience this thing is not, uh, you cannot clickjack this. Also, because it's embedded nicely into the pop up window, you can tell that it's part of the same sheet. It's native and secure. It's not part of the website because you can see that the native sheet itself is laid, overlaid right on top of my toolbars. So I'm going to click continue just to show you that it works. And there we go. We just completed payment with Payment Handler. Let's switch back to the slides, please. So as you can see, we're going to always look for new ways to improve our payment experience. Now, for developers, this 
Um, this payment handler example is a great way to showcase of what our mantra is, which is we want to ensure that you only have to integrate with the Google Pay API once. And after that, you're going to be able to continuously benefit from all the improvements that we make without you having to change any parts of your integration. When you integrate on Android, for example, we can make updates through the Google Play services to the, to the 2 billion active Android devices. However, this has always limited us to client releases. Now that we switch to the web, uh, now that we launch on web and we switch to this new JSON interface, we're able to take advantage of the continuous server pushes so that we can bring new features and improvements on a daily basis. And as we look to expand Google Pay to additional surfaces, we want to bring the same consistent unified integration experience for all developers. So I'm happy to announce that we're going to be extending the same JSON interface and bringing it from the web to Android, AMP, Actions on Google, and more. So let me walk you through a couple of these examples by starting with accelerated mobile pages. Now, we've seen tremendous adoption of AMP from around the world. AMP by design is a restricted set of HTML with limited JavaScript support. By working closely with the AMP team, you'll soon be able to enable Google Pay by using these standard AMP components. All you need to do is drop in the same JSON payload as you would to load payment data, and you'll be able to easily render a Google Pay button within your AMP page. The button itself will ha automatically handle opening the payment sheet and returning you the payment method token. And as we all know, payment is no longer limited to just websites and native apps. If you happen to be collecting payments through Android messages or through the Google Assistant, you'll soon be able to also enable the same Google Pay exper experience with the same JSON interface. Consistent and easy to integrate on all surfaces, we're making Google Pay as easy to integrate everywhere as it is for users to pay everywhere. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how to collect payments on Android messages or through the Google Assistant, go find my buddy Sean, who will be at the Google, Assist uh, Google Assistant Sandbox from 12 to 2 tomorrow. All right, Avnish, take us home. All right. Thank you, Tony. So we've shared a lot of details with you today about how you can add Google Pay to your site to improve conversion. We're really excited to see how you'll integrate. We know there's a lot of information out there. We've sort of nicely organized it into two websites there. There's one for, uh, to, so you can learn about how Google Pay can improve things for your business overall. So that's g.co slash pay slash business. And if you're ready to start integrating, just dive right into our developer docs there. So Tony and I are also going to be available right after the session in our sandbox that's located at uh, Dome G. So you know, please stop by, ask questions. We'll also have members from the Google Pay team available tomorrow if you can't make it today. So stop by, ask questions, try a few demos out. We also, if you want to learn more about Google Pay, we also have two more sessions tomorrow. Uh, the first is led by our Payments UX team. And it uh, walks through like design principles, how you can optimize conversion using Google Pay. And for learning about how you can enable transactions via the Assistant, you know, check out the session on adding transactional capabilities to your actions uh, tomorrow afternoon. And that's hosted by our Assistant team. Finally, we have a hackathon coming up next month for those of you on the West Coast. It's in San Francisco. It's in June. Uh, you know, so you can sign up at the link there or stop by again at our sandbox if you'd want more information. We host developer events globally. So if you'd like to see an event near you or if you want to stay tuned for upcoming events, you can uh, you know, sign up for your developer documentation, and we'll keep you posted. And that's it. Thank you so much for attending. Enjoy the rest of Google I.O.